How's it going everyone? It's Adrian from Pink Pirates TCG here and I'm back with another gameplay video for you guys. Um, this time it's going to be on The Sim. Uh, the, the live gameplay videos are not stopping. This is just uh, for kind of um, a little bit of breathing room for me uh, because, you know, going over those live videos, uh, it's a lot of work in editing and I'm, so I'm just starting school back up again. So I'm going to be a little bit more busy, but those live videos aren't stopping. Uh, we have more for you. There are other members of the channel that have yet to upload that you're going to hear from, hopefully. So I'm really excited for you guys to, to deal with that. Um, but today, yeah, we're going to go over this gameplay that I got. Uh, I played two matches back to back uh, with my kid deck and they were both Zoro. So we're going to go over one of the most common matchups in the game, which is uh, green versus red. And kind of as the green player, what am I thinking about? And maybe even what the red player could have done differently. So let's get right into the gameplay. I think, uh, you know, I just get right into a lobby here. And yeah, it's going to be against a red player. Typically against red, I really want to go first um, because I want the first swing just in case they play something like a Vivi or a Psy on their first turn. So I'm just going to start off with the Jewelry Bonnie on turn one. And there it is. He's going to play the Psy. So this is exactly why I want to go first because uh, this turn ends up playing out really well to where I just rest um, his Psy with Cat Viper. And now his aggression is really, really stunted, right? And now I've developed a board with Cat Viper on it that could potentially swing into one of his um, lower attack characters. So that's kind of the game plan that I'm going for here. He's gonna swing at me with 7K with the Brook, which is a pretty good play. Don't really get a trigger off of it. And now I have to think, right? Cause I just got Basil off of hand. Basil is so good. Um, into this matchup, but I'm kind of rethinking it because you know if he were to play um, Jet pistol this would actually put me back by a f Really far margin So I'm reconsidering because I do have a cat viper in hand that I could just use to rest the brook to stop his aggression even more Right, so I go with that play um, And then I go and swing with Nekomamushi uh, Just so that I can you know take a card out of his hand potentially um, you know, if he lets this through, that's even better, but he's going to counter it with the Sanji, which tells me that he has 1k counters in his hand that he might not get rid of, or maybe he doesn't have a 1k counter. So that's a really, really good, um, that's a really good, uh, card to get out of his hand, right? The Sanji. So I, I think that play is a little bit better, um, going a little wider than just the Basil Hawkins, because, you know, if he does have the jet pistol in hand, then I'm just like gonna eat a ton of damage for free uh while on the other hand like i could just have these like cheap kind of attackers i even have the rhizo down to gain a card and go up in card advantage you know because i am going to be countering out of some of these eventually so it's really useful to kind of um have the rhizo down and he's gonna start attaching dawn he's gonna play his sanji um i do think this is a little bit of a misplay for he should be swinging first before playing with the Sanji of course because you know like what if I had um like Punk Gibson to rest his stuff and then he's going to just full send it swing into me for 7k twice play another Brook down for his Sanji to get rush and this is kind of the situation I was talking about right um it it actually doesn't really matter that I don't have the basil because uh, I have a lot of cheap uh, attackers on board that I can use. So I end up using the Bonnie effect first there, swinging into the, um, the Sanji even, swinging into the Brook even with 3k and 4k. I do this because uh, I'm not that scared uh, that he's going to counter out of it because, you know, he countered 2k for the last um, for the last thing I swung at. So I don't think that he has 2ks in hand, or sorry, 1k in hand. Uh, so I'm going to opt to, again, just swing with the 5k here with the neko mamushi instead of um playing the basil it could that might be a little bit of a misplay but you know like at this point he does have two attacks on board so i really want to save life and play the killer um this is just because you know like he's not he's probably not going to on spot removal my killer he doesn't have a nico robin i doubt he's going to use a jet pistol on it uh so this is a good time for me to block one of his attacks and gain a card out of it right so with green the way i like to think about it is because you have so many blockers and uh good counter cards like you want to be 
thinking kind of like a boxer. Like you are countering their aggression because they're leaving themselves open on their board. So by doing, um, by playing these cards, by playing blockers, you're able to kind of stunt their aggression by blocking or countering and then return um, back with more on your board, right? So board presence is very important in this matchup. And then he's just gonna attack um, with his one cost Nami into my Bonnie. I'm gonna let it go through. I was considering saving it, but then, I mean, he's he's just gonna attack with something else um, again, and I don't really want that to happen. So I'm gonna let that go through. Uh, I think he actually, if I remember, makes a misplay here too. Um, yeah, he does. So he's he's, what he should do here is he should try to attack like this with his Brook. And now he should be attacking with his Luffy with two Dawn on him, in my opinion, so that I don't get the draw off of Killer. But what he's going to end up doing is attaching extra onto Zoro and swinging into my face, I think. And then I'm just going to block it with Killer. Yeah, I'm just like looking at his Dawn right here because he definitely should have attached to and attacked first because I'm just going to block this, right? And then... Uh, you know, if you look at what happens here, he's just going to play the Gordon. Um, maybe he wanted to go wider, but in my opinion, I would not have let that draw go through. Um, I would have just opted to, you know, swing. And then I have to think about, do I want to block this without getting the draw? Or do I want to just take the hit, right? But he's going to elect to just cycle his hand out through for Gordon. And uh, I do have the 8-drop kid in hand. I do have a play for it. But his board is just way too threatening for uh, me to drop it right now, in my opinion. So I think I end up going for a very different play. Because, um, I mean, I'm just going to attack into the Brook, even. And then uh, I think I want to... Yeah. So this is an interesting play I do. I go up to um, 9 here. And typically that's not what you want to do, but I do it because he has two cards in hand. If they're both 2Ks, I want him to use them. So I don't have to go all the way up to 10K because then I could just restand my kid and then swing into it again while he has zero cards in hand. And of course he takes the bait. So um, he rips two cards out of his hand for this. And then what ends up happening is I just discard, uh, I think, Basil here restand my kid and then swing into his luffy anyway he loses it, his luffy so i mean in my opinion definitely not worth it there uh now he's only playing with one card in hand next turn as opposed to two granted maybe like he didn't really have use for those cards but in my opinion red has some of the most playable 2k counters in the game so you definitely could have found value for that so i think it's a huge misplay on that part uh and just really dawn efficient by me right so he's going to swing 9k here. I mean, I'm obviously going to block it. No need to take cards out of my hand for that. Um, he's going to end up attaching one to Zoro before that. And I'm sure he does not have a lot of plays in hand. Again, because, because I mean, he got rid of two cards out of his hand. So uh, he's going to be thinking for a pretty long time about this. And I think, yeah, he just swings with a Nami in 5k into my Cat Viper. That's not like a huge problem to me. He swings 7k. And I'm going to take, uh, I take this because uh, I think at this point, it's very safe to uh, play 8-drop Kid. I mean, like, because he has only two cards in hand. His board is, like, really garbage. So <laughs> I'm not afraid of, oh, here I'm, like, thinking whether I should just play arrested character and then i realized that i don't actually have a good character to play here so i'm gonna use the bonnie first to kind of pick up uh hopefully pick up a card to play i'm bouncing between either killer or beige and i end up picking killer here because on the off chance that i like circle back around to the bottom of my deck i want there to be the cheaper blocker in my hand uh just in case i need to play it but yeah this game's uh pretty messed up right now because i mean he has two cards in hand to deal with my um eustace kid um and that's very difficult for red and this is the situation that that's so hard for red players right so i'm just gonna block it with killer here and then i'm kind of considering what to do i have a lot of counters in hand uh, i want to use the bonnie first grab another 2k counter and then just and kind of he's swing just gonna out quits 
Uh, not much he could do against the 8-drop kid there. So I get into another one here. Um, I think... Yeah, and it just so happens to be another Zoro player. This is actually someone that I've seen on the ladder uh, before. And I think I play, I've played a few games with him. And he mainly plays Zoro, so... Just gonna start off with the Momonosuke. I got a really good hand um, for this this time around. Like I could pretty much deal with anything he he puts out uh, with Nekomamushi, and even if I didn't, I have the Momonosuke's right. So I think I just swing into here. I want to get down the Rizo because I know he is going to be putting something down to attack me, and now that I have the Momonosuke on board, I could rest it gain a card uh if he's on four dawn he could still jet pistol me but i mean like using it on a Rizo probably isn't the best idea and then he swings 6k into me of course i'm just not gonna block and then he's gonna play the nico robin so this is actually pretty good for me because i'm gonna be able to draw off of Rizo and probably kill the nico robin and if he ends up protecting the nico robin he's just gonna lose a ton of cards out of his hand but I, I'm going to go for the 5k swing here. And then um, we'll see where this goes, right? Because I have the Nekomamushi, I have the killer. I think I just go for the simple play here and just play the Nekomamushi, play the killer, get rid of the Nico Robin, just for the for sure uh, kill on it. And then now we actually have like... A pretty wide board so even if he does end up building a board that full swings into me we could at least deal with it straight afterwards that's like the really annoying thing about Zoro is that you know a lot of other decks they'll play like one or two minions Zoro can play like two to three a turn just build a like really good board and just swing wide and be really annoying so it's really important that you have like these these low-cost characters playing green because now I could just contest his board whenever he decides to full swing with leader. And then I'm just going to take it. I, I think for the most part, you don't really care about taking life against red as green. Especially if you have um, the 8 drop kid. Uh, you're a little, I, like, I, at least I'm a little bit more willing to take life. Um, that also just could be a mistake, but I just love having cards in my hand for this matchup. He's going to play Brook, which is going to go super wide, like I said. But again, like I have a board that could potentially deal with this, right? It's not too annoying for me. He's going to swing. Um, looks like 6k into me. I'm not going to not gonna counter out with anything. It would take two cards out of my hand. And I'm just kind of thinking, uh, I definitely do want to get the Rizo draw off. Um, I'm going to bottom deck two Beppos, grab a Neko Mamushi. This is pretty good actually for um, the chopper. And I'm just gonna swing into Sanji. I don't need to really put any Dawn on there. If he wants to protect it using the blocker or using a 1K, that's fine with me because I have three other things that I can swing out with. So it doesn't really matter. He already uses the blocker. So I'm gonna force him to take cards out of his hand now. And it's really good as the green player to kind of try and take as many cards out of your opponent's hand as possible and even maybe swing like with low numbers just so you could kind of bait it a little bit so i'm going to swing into him with the um killer here at 4k and now he's like really has to think like is it worth it to save a card and he decides it's not he which i kind of agree with his board is really wide right now where he could swing fives at me and then that, that's just going to let me uh, spend the five remaining Dawn. This is actually kind of a misplay um, because I should have I should have swung leader first here because, I mean, let's say I swing into him 5k here and he triggers Jet Pistol. I'm just going to lose my blocker and a 6k body, which is going to like really, really suck for me. Um so always make sure that you're swinging with everyone you want to swing for before you play cards down because yeah i mean if i swung if he takes that and it's jet pistol i'm way way behind and he could potentially just swing fives at me he's gonna spend four dawn on the jet pistol i think that's a good play it's it's probably a fine play 
the value that you get from law is pretty good because um it doesn't it it lets zoro um or doesn't let zoro just swing five all the time so it's very very useful i'm just checking all of his dawn he i'm like super thinking about whether i should save this i do i can save it but i decide against it because i only have one 2k in hand um, and I'm kind of looking at his Dawn here, like if that is a Zoro, he has three Dawn, he's just going to play a Zoro, swing at it at 6k again, and that takes two cards out of my hand while he kind of just progresses his board state further. But he's going to end up just swinging 4k. I don't know if I agree with that. I feel like, I feel like with red you really should go for the throat especially if the green player doesn't have like a lot of blockers or like eight drop kid i don't think you care about the board that much right like i, I don't know i don't know why you would clear the cat viper there because i have to allocate dawn to get the cat viper up to attacking potential on um unless it's on something like his nami's but even then like it's not even worth it to save those nami's right so then I'm just going to do the usual shambles back the Nekomamushi to play it again. Get rid of his Sanji that he just played. And this is um, this is going to be a pretty comfortable spot for me. I think I'm like thinking about whether I should play the killer, uh, get an extra card. I think I do end up playing it because I have three remaining Dawn. I don't really have to put up like a multitude of blockers. So I put up the killer. So I have two blockers on this turn. Uh, he, it'll It's like really unlikely he'll kill me this turn. So I'm just kind of thinking about what I should do. I'm saving these eight drop kids for when he uses like a majority of his resources and I drop down to like pretty low health. Right now like two HP, like it's scary, but like not too, too scary. And then um, he swings five at me. I'm just gonna counter out with Momonosuke. Uh, he's less useful in the late game. I think Momonosuke's best thing that he can pull is like um, pretty much Izo in the late game. Uh, unless you have a 8-drop kid with an Okiku behind it, that combo is just disgusting. And then I just block with Killer to get that card, which is another Raizo, which is awesome. Because Raizo is going to let us uh, keep gaining card advantage when we have 8-drop kid up. And then this one, I feel a little bit uncomfortable um, being at this life, so I'm going to counter it. Uh, he plays another Zoro here. It was the, it ended up being the right play because if I don't counter there, uh, I either take two life or I get rid of two cards. So, I, um, actually, countering two K there was very good. Like it was the most efficient play to do. So I'm just going to swing into his Nami with Cat Viper. Uh, yeah, you you pretty much never 2k there. Uh, 2k counter, I mean. I'm going to swing at his Zoro, maybe get a card out of it. Um, if he lets me do it, you know, maybe you do a restand play here. It's all um, up to you, right? So he's going to get rid... He's going to play that VV to counter out with 1k. I'm going to end up killing the Zoro anyway, so... He kind of wasted that one. I don't super mind that there's a Zoro on board right now. Uh, unless he has like Diombo Jambe. Uh, but even then, like, it's pretty unlikely since the cards, um, they, they don't run a lot of them, right? Yeah, so I'm just going to swing 6k. I think my thought process is I really want to get another killer on board to draw another card. So I don't want to attach the remaining dawn but i feel like yeah i feel like that overall that's like kind of a misplay i think it's definitely more worth it to swing into the zoro with 7k and then just straight up play the two drop blocker or then or maybe even just like play beige i think i wanted to just play the killer there for sure because i know i want to play beige alongside a um captain kid because I want to play Captain Kid soon because I'm at low life and he's also at low cards. So those two things in tandem together are like really good because 
um, being low life means that Kid will get more value in protecting me, and then Zoro having less cards means that he probably will will not be able to deal with an 8-drop Kid, right? So he's gonna be attaching his Dawn. He has two cards left here. He swings uh, 8k in, into me, actually, so I'm just gonna block immediately uh, with the killer there. He swings 8k probably um, to swing 2k over the Trafalgar Law if I chose to block with that. But personally, I think he should have just gone 7 because I'm there's no way I'm blocking with Law before the killer blocker. But I mean, that, that's all up to him, right? And then he's just... I don't think he really has a play to do, which really clues me in on what to do. Because if he's willing to just attach this much Dawn and swing into me, that really just means there's probably no play in his hand. So he's attaching just like all the Dawn to swing into me. Uh, he has like 11k right now on his leader. And I don't know, he's just kind of thinking, I guess, 11k. Uh, I'm actually going to take this because right now is... I'm thinking this is such an awesome time to 8-drop Kid because I know he doesn't have a play in hand. So I swing into Zoro, uh, just hoping to get it down. He doesn't have a counter in hand or he doesn't want to counter the Zoro. So now I just have the decision to make, uh, you know, like, do I want to play double blocker with 8-drop Kid? What do I really want to do? Uh, I end up playing the Rizo here because um, I know I'm going to play one blocker Beige. So I'm sitting pretty comfortably, to be honest, here. Might have been a misplay. Um, and then I just attach one because, you know, if he has something like Diablo Jambe, um, it could be a little tricky for me. But then uh, I still have two blockers, even though even if he does use like something like Rush Luffy, uh, to KO the 8 drop but I mean he has like almost no cards in hand so what are the odds of any of this happening pretty low right so at this point it's kind of it's kind of tough like because then you can't really full attach you kind of just so he's going to play the Sanji he has Eight remaining Dawn left. He's going to pump those up. So those are both at 5k now. And yeah, I feel like you just chip away, right? Like you just kind of try to pump up your guys uh, just enough to swing 8k. I mean, I, that's all he has really like. Uh, that's the only Dawn play he could really do. And he's just going to... Yeah, he's like allocating it. To his size so he's swinging two 8ks and then of course i'm just gonna counter out with rizo don't need to use the blockers there and then i'm just gonna block one this is because i want to keep my bonnie so i could keep getting value i have rizo down already so uh rizo plus bonnie is just gonna let me like uh go insane with the card advantage and then i want to get rid of his board so he kind of showed me that he might not have a counter in hand, so I'm going to swing 4k. And then of course we swing 4k Rizo, draw the extra card. It's an Okiku, which isn't the most useful. And from here on out, like, it's kind of just, it's kind of, it's going to be so tough for him to come back because, um, you know, he has to deal with the 8-drop kid. He has to deal with a lot of stuff right now. And uh, I feel like I do make a little bit of a misplay here. I think I play for the um i think i play for the seven drop uh kid here i also shouldn't swing here i i feel like because i definitely can kill him next turn uh between like you know eight drop kid and double swing and everything on board so you know giving him more cards isn't really the best thing to do also i'm about to play seven drop kid which is like okay uh but i feel like I feel like maybe, I don't know, I just feel like that's kind of a wrong play because, um, you know, I gave him more cards than I needed to give him, and he's going to be, if he doesn't kill me this turn, he's going to be dying the turn after, so I don't think it really matters uh, where I swing with my face there. 
Uh, I think I should have just held it um, so he would have one less card to deal with. Because then he could still potentially... He could still potentially deal with my stuff, right? Like, if he has, like, Otama Pistol plus Diombo Jambe, and then um, he just full stacks on leader, I think that's, a, what, like a like a 6 dawn play? He'd swing at me 9k, he'd win. So... You you want to let you want to like lower the chances that red has to kill you right? Uh, it, that that's just the thought process going on. He has four cards. He's just taking a really long time to think. Um, I think he ends up just like he can't really do anything here. I have too much in terms of defense. I have two big blockers. Um, so like even if he plays Shanks, I could block it. Uh, even if I didn't have those blockers, I mean Shanks only swings for. Actually, Shanks would swing for 11k, so a little bit different. He's going to attach one. Maybe has like a rush card here. But yeah, this is kind of how you want to play it. Like in terms of green, like you want to kind of ride the edge like of, you know, getting lethal <laughs> because um, the most important thing is like making sure that you have the highest chance to let your 8-drop kid stick, right? Because red does have a really good way to deal with it in Otama Pistol. You just want to make sure that, like, that the chance of you getting Otama Pistol is really low. And then he's going to swing, I think, 9k into my guy. Um, and then I counter off with the Izo. Yeah, I block with the Trafalgar Law there because I don't want to counter with the Izo. And that's going to be the game. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. This is, I know this is a very different gameplay video um, as to like what we usually post on this channel, but it's getting a little bit more difficult to get those gameplay videos together because now I am back in school and kind of away from, you know, the people that I usually make videos with. But we are making a ton of new content for you guys eventually. Uh, we're meeting up on weekends to kind of film. So let us know how we're doing, like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you guys for getting us to 400 subs. We're actually on our way to 500, which is awesome. Uh, and as always, have a good week. Good luck on your exams, whatever you're going through. Uh, and I'll see you guys on the next one.